But to answer your question about Manchester, I love it. I, I love the fact that I could get in a train and just go to Manchester and just hang out with people who just wanted to hear, well, what are you going to talk about on the tour and all? And, uh, and basically, it's just love. I'm like, can I share love across the, the nation? The, the kind of love that you and I bonded over with Enzo years ago. Do years, you remember? Years ago. Of course I remember. How can I forget? And, but that love lasts forever because it's bonded in a world of... I, rem I remember the smell of the kitchen tiles that I was laying down and was hugging my dog and you came to stroke us both. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. Bit, a bit, well, well, a bit. I remember, I, I remember, I remember the smell of the tars. I remember the smell of, of Enzo's defecation because he couldn't control his um, mm. movements. And you came, and I remember the blue. <laughs> oh, he's me getting all tearful. I remember the blue Aaron sweater that you were wearing that night. Oh my god, yeah. Yes, I remember. I'm sorry, mate. No, it's like it's good, man. It's good because yeah. it's love, isn't it? It's love. Well, that's the unconditional love I'm talking about. The love that doesn't judge the love that sees you as you are and allows you to be yourself, the love that uh, allows you not to have anger. You're going to make everyone cry. They're going to pay to come and cry. <laughs> and the love, that, the love that gives you peace. Yeah. And it's eternal. And so, it's on tap. No, you've just got me going. I wasn't animals. ready for that. Sorry about that. I'm um, sorry, mate. No, it's good. It's good. That's, it's how, good. that's how we met. And I, I've loved you to bits since. And thank you so much for being on the journey with me and helping me. But your question was... I took a picture of you lying on your father's grave in the snow. That's how close. <laughs> that's how close friends we are. Yeah, actually, I was lying on my own grave, and oh, when, 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 you when you know, Sorry. right next to Daddy, and when you know where you're going to end up, it's very easy to travel the journey because it, you know there's only one place you're going to end up. Isn't it strange though? You know, we we fear everything, lots of things in life. You know, life is suffering. Suffering is uh, desire. There is an end to desire, and there's a path to that end of desire. They're the four noble truths. The eightfold path, righteous path is, is you know. Is, is the route map how we should live our life. The second you remember that, life gets a lot easier. Um, but we forget it all the time until we remember yeah, it. Yeah, we, you know, we that's do. The and point, there's isn't this, it? there's this, you get me going now, there's this fantastic. Don't uh, try and outcry no, me. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to outcry Because I will win I'm, that competition. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely not. <laughs> but in this book, Kira and Me, that comes out in October, Kira was my Enzo. And I have a line in that about fear. Because she, Christmas Day 2022, she wrote through me because I was just feeling really sad. Mammy had gone. You came to visit Mammy with me. I did. And it was a beautiful thing. But Mammy had gone and Kira had gone. And I was just a bit terrible on Christmas Day 2022. And Kira and me, this book came together that I'm going to read a bit of in the live show for the first time. And I actually read it aloud Saturday, this Saturday for the very first time. And it made me cry. But there's a line in there about fear. And it says, if you can embrace it, rather than run from it, sometimes the fear, the thing you fear the most can make you least afraid. Isn't that an amazing thing that she taught me? Because when I was facing all the fear with her when she had her accident, should I put her back together again? Am I doing this for me? Am I doing it for her? Is it ethical? Is it the right thing to do? She gave me everything with no conditions whatsoever. And in that moment, the thing I feared the most set me free, allowed me to be least afraid. Victor Frankl said, everything can be taken from a person, but one thing, the last of the human freedoms, to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's own way. That's his quote. And of course, you don't have to wait for everything to be taken from you to actually choose your attitude to any given set of circumstances to choose one's own way. And, you know, the sort of, the, the, uh, the, the, the bedfellow of that quote would be take every moment, understand it, don't fear it, don't react to it, give yourself the grace and the space to respond or not respond and not responding is in its own way a response and then consider how that can be useful to everybody else. Yeah. And if, you, if, you, if you're ever worried about anything um, and whether it's, you know, you, you, the fact you may feel imperiled yourself or some people around you may f you may consider they're in peril. If you go to the be useful lane, it's just very, very helpful. Yeah, I, I've been thinking a lot about this, uh, the earthquake in 
Morocco over the weekend and the war in Ukraine and all that stuff. And I started to write the show. Of course, won't surprise you, I only started yesterday. <laughs> and I was right. It's quite early for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> At least three weeks before we are actually due to do it. Um, so yeah, as opposed to the night before. But I started to write and I thought, well, it's all relative. We all have our own challenges, you know, our own issues in life. But there's a lot of stuff in the world. And this concept of being useful um, and and they talk about compassion fatigue in, in my job, in my profession, because every day I just try to be useful to the family. I don't call them owners. I never have. They're just a family of uh, a dog called Mabel, who I saw out yesterday afternoon. So Mabel has been in my hospital for the last few weeks. Mabel nearly died twice. And oh, man. And Mabel went home yesterday and I just... And her mum works in prisons and she's seen all kinds of stuff, all kinds of stuff. She she's a, she helps ladies in prisons who have had a really tough time for various reasons. And they're in there because of maybe stuff that they didn't really mean to do, etc., etc. Anyway, man, it's a teary show this morning. <laughs> so I, I held Mabel's mum yesterday and I just felt this surge of being useful in that moment, you know that Mabel for her and for her family and for me represented everything that's important in life. Like Enzo did for you, like Kira did for me. If I can somehow translate that, that ethereal essence of oneness that bonds us all together as human beings. Actually, at the end of the day, the only thing that really matters, which is your children, your mum, the, the people that you love. I mean, I was at your mum's funeral and said the uh, eulogy. You told me I should get a different job because I was quite good <laughs> was at very that. Good at it. <laughs> he's quite good at his own job, but he's really good at being a celebrant. But, but in that moment, you're you're of service. And if I can serve everybody on the tour and bring them into that love and make them feel safe in, in a world which sometimes feels unsafe, then I feel that that's really worthwhile. Yeah, and your tears came from the relief that you could be useful in that moment. Thank goodness I can be useful. That's where that, that's what that is. Yes. Thank God I was, thank God I didn't think I could be useful. Thank God, thank God, thank God, let me be useful again and again and again and again. He's trying to outcry me. He's not, he's not going to win. <laughs> you can outcry the both of us. <laughs> come on, join in. You're getting paid as well. Sinead, Ask him a question, Sinead. Sinead come on, cry and ask a question. <laughs> said, no wonder you're wearing black. <laughs> Both of you. I'm wearing grey. I'm not much better. And I had a guy in his mid-50s come to see me recently. well hard guy, ex-military, really hard guy. Had been stabbed in the head, full nine yards and everything else. And his dog came in and his dog had this crisis and it was life or death. And all of a sudden, he just grabs me and floods of tears. Yeah. And he just held me and he's like, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. And I'm like, no, 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 it's fine. He said, well, I'm so sorry because it's the first time I've hugged anybody for a long time and it's the first time ever that I have cried. Ever? Ever. Oh, my God. I mean, uh, ever. Oh, my God. And I believed him. I believe you. And I looked at him and I said, and he's, <laughs> he's, he's a four-year-old boy. Yeah, of course. And the reason you just reminded me was, he said, when I was four, I, I just wanted the dog, you know, to keep me company. And he told me a bit about his background and stuff. It was a pretty tough, rough background. And in that moment, his little boy came up inside him and he was whole. And we did the consult and unfortunately, things worked out okay. And at the end of it, this man who had never cried in his whole life before, he just shook my hand. He couldn't bring himself to hug again. It was quite funny. He wanted yeah, to hug, hugging. but he couldn't. Yeah. Did don't do hugging. No, I tried it. It wasn't for me. Don't, don't, don't. He shook my hand really firmly and he looked me straight in the eye. And he just said something that I, I should remember forever. Thank you for making me whole again. Oh, 